What's up guys, how you doing? Welcome back to Football Digest Daily. My name is Nyash, here we need to eat football. And then repeat your mad about football like that. Now, so much has happened since I was last year, because it's been a minute. Now, the Euros have come to a conclusion. They have ended, did not come home. Olympics have come and gone. Kipchoge has done the team, won't go on again. Messi has left Barcelona. Can you imagine that? Sancho has finally joined Manchester United and Arsenal fans are sleeping in the cold like Ambaré because, you know, Arsenal is not performing and neither is Ambaré. So we'll be talking about that and much more right about now. So, Lionel Andres Messi is finally leaving Barcelona and this is a shocker for many. I mean, even the guy who was shooting this one for me, we could not believe it. So, Messi is leaving Barcelona because apparently they can't pay him well. They can't pay him enough. And even if they do pay him, they will be doing that against the regulations of La Liga. That's precisely why he's leaving Barcelona. And this is hard for such a guy who has played like his entire football at Barcelona. He has won six Ballon d'Ors at Barcelona. He has won 34 trophies at Barcelona, inclusive of 10 La Liga titles, uh, four Champions League titles. He has scored 672 goals at Barcelona. As in, this is a juggernaut. This is a goat. Arguably, of course, there's always the issue between Cristiano and you know, Messi, who is a goat, but man, Messi is a goat in his own right. So he's finally leaving Barcelona in very hard times. He was having a press conference yesterday, did a lot of crying because he could not believe he's leaving. And he has honestly tried because Messi last season was on the verge of leaving. And then they came to a conclusion, they came to a, to a conclusion, an agreement with Barcelona, and he said to stay for one season. But this time around, it was not going to happen. And now he's on the verge of joining, guess who? PSG. Man, and I'm looking at PSG now, and if they get Messi, they still have Mbappe, they still have Neymar, they've just signed Sergio Ramos, they've just also gotten Gino and Naldam, they have Donnarumma, as in, these guys, they have to win the Champions League, and of course, that's what they're chasing, but they can win it, but their coach, on the other hand, is a bottler. They have Pochettino as a coach, he's a bottler. I don't know if you can get them to the success, but it's going to be interesting. PSG have offered him a two-year contract and it's yet to be accepted, but they're still considering it. So let's wait and see how that's going to happen. That's going to be a huge one. We have always wanted to see Messi doing something outside of La Liga and now he's going outside of La Liga, but to League One. League One is a farmer's league, I'm sorry to say, but there's not much competition over there. So he's still going to be calling the shots over there and dominating like crazy. But still, let's get up and see what Messi is going to be doing at PSG. It's just a matter of time now before he's announced. So another guy who has moved places is Jadon Sancho. Now this one is interesting because, I mean, Manu has been pursuing this guy for like forever. I mean, at one point in time they wanted to get him last season, did not materialize, they could not meet the price that Borussia Dortmund was asking for. And then now they have come again and they have paid up 73 million pounds. Now, this is crazy because there are some Man United fans, some Man United fans who actually think they did not have to pay that much. They actually feel like they don't need Sancho, of which, personally for me, I don't agree. I feel, I feel like Sancho is going to come in handy for, for Man United in a very good way. I mean, we all know the biggest problem for Man United is not attacking-wise, it's defensive-wise. So, people are having issues, oh, why are we signing uh, Sancho when we could have gone for a defender? Of which they finally did, and they signed Rafael Varane, who, weirdly, has not yet been unleashed. Or rather, Anvil. We're still waiting to see what's going to be popping over there, but Man United is, is now starting to look like a proper squad. But the fact that they don't have a defensive midfielder, that's the only one piece in their jig, so you'd say. They just have to sort this one out and then they're like proper title contenders. But for now, Jadon Sancho is at Manchester United. He was a former Manchester City player. And he once said that Manchester City, no, Manchester is blue. So I don't know what changed. Because now he's in the right side of Manchester. So let's wait and see what's going to be popping over there. It's going to be fun. United fans, they need to tell us, what do you think this is going to come through for you guys? Or are you still feeling like... Nah, we didn't actually need this guy. We have Rashford, we have Greenwood. Because even Sancho coming in is going to be limiting Greenwood getting some game time, that's for sure. So, yeah, it's a bit 50-50 as far as Man United fans go with the signing of Jadon Sancho. But for me, I don't give a shit. Honestly, I don't. If it works, well and good. If it doesn't, still, well and good for me as an Arsenal fan. So, yeah, that's going to be interesting. And of course, the Olympics was happening, wasn't it? And it just concluded... Some days ago, I think, uh, actually it's Sunday, yeah, it was happening. And of course, we had some football going on. We had the football men's uh, going on. We had Brazil going up against Spain in the final. Brazil won and they maintained the gold. And there was one guy who was playing in that final called Dani Alves. Dani Alves has won like almost everything. He's actually the most decorated football player. He's won almost everything one could win in football, barring the World Cup. 
So he's won the Champions League, he's won La Liga titles, he has won Syria, he's won League One uh, league title. I think I think the Premier League, maybe he would have actually won the Premier League medal. But of course, Brazil won the gold. For the women's side, it was not Germany who was maintaining the medals anymore. Canada actually won the gold for women's side, and I think they beat Sweden in the final. So that was interesting. Of course, Kenya, we are not playing football because we are not good like that, but we are actually very good in athletics. Yeah, and you had Fit Kipia Gold who actually won gold for Kenya and she maintained and she set a new Olympics record by the way, so kudos to her. We also had King Choge, Kamka, doing his thing in the uh, marathon for men and he actually won gold again. He won gold in Rio 2016 and he has won gold again this time around. So, man, he's a king. He's a juggernaut. He's a legend. We absolutely love him. And now, this other one. This, as a national fan for me, this is... Uh, I don't know how to say it. It's more of a catch-22. I'm kind of confused on how to go about this one. Now, Arsenal is not performing. We're in the preseason, right? But a couple of days to the start of the Premier League, and we are not doing shit, man. Just like how some other people are not doing shit. Now they're living alone. I'm talking Amber, eh? Right? We all know how the story goes, right? So, Arsenal, we just got uh, sparked on Sunday by Spurs. Before that, we had been beaten by Chelsea. Before that, we had drawn. Before that, we had won a very easy game against Watford, another one easy against Millwall. Before that, we had gotten beat. So, basically, we're just taking L's, and the Premier League is starting off in four days, and we have not brought in guys who are going to rejuvenate our squad. So, I don't know how exactly we're going to get the top four, because we have to get there. I mean, if we don't get the top four, Atleta is going to get sucked. And now I'm thinking, we actually don't have to wait for the whole season. We can just go in for 10 games. I mean, if Atleta doesn't get his shit correct, in 10 games, man, them should start parking and leave, man. And to take a couple of Barindi Kawa to Ngine. No, Arsenal fans, we are goddamn tired. Now, last season we finished 8th. The other season we finished 8th. Something has to give, man. Something has to give. So, Arsenal has a lot of work to do. We are looking at signing some attacking midfielder players. But I'm wondering, why are we waiting till the Premier League is kicking off for us to go for those guys? Those are guys who should have gotten in, like, a long time ago. I mean, look at Man City. They've been linked with Grealish for a week, and within one week they've completed the transfer. Chelsea, on the other hand, they've been linked with Lukaku. It's just a matter of time now before he's unleashed, or unveiled, rather, at Stamford Bridge. So, Arsenal, as always, taking their sweet ass time, and it's not like they're doing proper business, or they're doing good in the league so that they can take their time. No, we are in shambles, bro. We are doing badly. So, we need to get out of that. We don't want to end in such cases like, you know, Amber and stuff, and they're just feeling cold, and being embarrassed and being the bad talk of the town and banter club. We are done and tired of that. So let's wait and see if Arsenal is going to be doing some business before the Premier League begins because they have to. But then again, the transfer window is closing on 31st August, so we'll have like two, three weeks to wait for. So let's, let's wait. But as an Arsenal fan, I'm super pissed off, man. Edu, Garlic, Ateta, nah. Still punching below the weight. Below their weight. Yeah, so... That's what's up, guys. Don't forget to always like and subscribe to get more of this content. And you can also check us out on Instagram and Facebook at Football Digest K.